So again, we'll take an example. We'll take example uh, 9.3. So I did example 9.3 using QUCS. Note that this is using QUCS, not QUCS Studio. Remember that QUCS Studio is based upon QUCS uh, with some uh, additional with some additional features like uh, the electromagnetic simulations. I tried doing this problem using QCS Studio, but I couldn't get the uh, gain circles to plot properly. A lot of the help documentation that we have uh, is for QCS. Uh, so I just switched over to QCS, and uh, basically the, it, it was very easy to solve after doing that. But um, I struggled using QCS Studio uh, to do this problem. So. I would advise you uh, for for this section of the co course to potentially switch over to QCS. So the interface is exactly, pretty much exactly the same. Uh, you shouldn't have any issues moving from QCS Studio to QCS. So I'll mention that in the synchronous session uh, later next week as well. So we have a BJT uh, that's defined uh, with a set of S parameters. So I have that here in my S parameter file, and they're asking us to design the amplifier with 8 dBs of gain. Uh, it also says to make sure that there's a perfect match on the input port. Uh, so that tells us that we need to use the operating power gain. Okay, so pay attention to uh, how the question is worded here. Um, so in QUCS, uh, apparently in QCS Studio uh, as well, I just couldn't get it to work. Um, but there's a function called GP Circle, and this plots the operating gain in the gamma L plane. Okay, so it's very useful for this problem for what and for what I'm trying to demonstrate here today. Just note that there's another function called uh, GA Circle and it plots GA in the gamma S plane. Okay, so when we're talking about uh, the design of low noise amplifiers and the use of noise circles, then we're gonna wanna use uh, this function here. But for this problem, uh, they're asking us to, to design an amplifier with 8 dB of gain, and they want a perfect match on the input port side here. Basically, they want the VSWR on the input side to be equal to one. So uh, you can see over here in QUCS, I set up my S parameter simulation, uh, I created a, an S2P file using the S parameters that are given uh, in example uh, 911 or wherever, wherever those numbers were, those values were given. Um, I define an equation here uh, using uh, the function GP circle, and you input the a capital S, which is the S parameters from your simulation, and then you give it a uh, the value of uh, the gain on a, a linear plot, so 8 dB is 6.31 on a linear scale. So um, I explicitly uh, showed down here that, just to remind us that this is in the load plane, okay, so this is in the gamma L plane, and you can see the uh, gain circle for the operating gain of 8 dB uh, shown here in the gamma L plane. So what we're trying to do here is we are trying to design an output matching network uh, that has a load reflection coefficient that lies somewhere on this circle. Okay, so the book selects uh, this value here, because if we have a 50 ohm load, then this would be a, a very simple output matching network uh, comprised of just a, a simple series uh, capacitor. So hopefully you can see that there, and you remember that from our uh, all of our classes and work on, on uh, matching network design. So we need to find uh, the value of that capacitor. So I set up another S parameter simulation with a, a capacitor. I increase the the value of the capacitor. Uh, manually, bit by bit, you can also do this using SimSmith, uh, where you use a technique where you uh, right-click and, and drag, and it will uh, automatically uh, figure out that value for you. But I just played around with different values, and you can see here that my S parameter simulation uh, of this capacitor ended up on the uh, 8 dB gain circle. So I bring that capacitor uh, into my network here with my S parameter file for the transistor, and I run another S parameter simulation. So over here we see the uh, gain of the entire circuit, and we can see that we fall short of the 8 dB uh, gain that we're striving for. Okay, so at uh, 2.4 gigahertz we're only at, uh, we have a gain of 7.65 here. So we're a little bit short, and that's because, like we said, when I first introduced uh, the operating gain method, the operating gain method assumes that there is a perfect match on the input here. So now the next step of this design process is to design the input matching network such that the impedance seen looking into the input matching network is complex conjugate match to the uh, input of the, of the transistor. And you can see that over here. That's what I'm trying to illustrate here. So if we perfectly match uh, gamma S to gamma N, then that will be reflected in another S parameter simulation. 
as our, uh, I guess I'll call this uh, gamma, gamma naught, uh, the reflection coefficient seen looking into the entire circuit, will end up right smack dab in the center of the Smith chart here, indicating a perfect match on the input side here, which is what was asked for. Uh, so after we accomplish this, once we match the, uh, you know, um, the source impedance with the imp complex conjugate of the input impedance to the uh, transistor, then you can see over here that we achieve our uh, gain of 8 dB. So one thing I wanted to point over here in this note is that the input matching network affects the noise performance of the circuit. Okay, this is very important. Okay, because there's going to be a lot of, a lot of uh, thermal noise that's generated in, in these components. And then that thermal noise is going to be amplified. It's going to affect the noise performance uh, on the output side of our, of our uh, amplifier here. So that's why in the next section, when we start looking at noise more closely, uh, we're going to want to plot gain circles in the gamma S plane. So that way we can uh, aim to simplify our uh, input matching networks as much as possible. So you see here, um, basically the, the design process led us to design the output matching network first. And we ended up with a very simple output matching network but um, we didn't really have much control over the design uh, of the input matching network here. So this is not ideal, but we'll see that in the next section.